and Lori from Tempe and Anna. Hi, Anna from Wichita, Kansas. We've got a we got a contingent in Wichita, Kansas. I'll bet you two know each other. I'm very excited about today's webinar. I think it may be one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> We're here um, on week 21, closing out week 21 of staying strong and positive for ourselves and our children. And I'm Kathy Wolf from Be Strong Families. And today we have one of our board members here, Sandy Baba, who is the is an amazing early childhood expert and also uh, did her doctoral research on and invented, essentially translated both culturally and uh, language wise, a parent cafe process into Chinese. So Sandy is multi-talented and, and very, uh, very well respected as an expert. She's one of the founders of the NACI Asian American Caucus. Is that correct? That's right. So, and, and we're delighted to have her as a board on our board, but today she's here to do a non-academic, really fun <laughs> cooking for and with kids during COVID-19. So we're very um, grateful to have her here today. And I love this topic. So let's move to the next slide, Cheyenne. Cheyenne's in the background, making everything work smoothly on the tech side. Uh, and we have two ways to engage. One way is the chat. So I've kind of get you used to directing your comments to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see. And then uh, use the chat whenever you want to ask a question, to give a comment, whatever you want. If you are burning to speak, you really want to speak, it's too long for what you want to say is too long for the chat or just for any reason you want to speak. All you need to do is raise your hand and then uh, we will unmute you. Cheyenne will unmute you. You'll unmute yourself and you will be able to speak. And then our regulars have already started agreeing and some of you might be wondering, what are they agreeing to? Well, there, whatever Be Strong Families does anything, we have agreements. And this is in recognition that we co-create this safe space. So here are our agreements for today. If you agree to them, if you could type, I agree in the chat, like Bernadette and Michael and Victoria and Anna, that would be great, Leah. Awesome. Let's go to the next slide. And this is where we're introducing Sandy. So Sandy, welcome, take it away. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. I can't believe you're all watching this. It's my first time doing a cooking show. <laughs> I mean, like a webinar. Um, so, uh, well, thank you for having me today, Kathy, and all the staff and then the viewers um, of the webinar. Um, so cooking for um, and with kids during COVID-19 is a topic that we brainstorm together because um, for me, um, when we when, when we had a discussion of what what would you like to do you know for be strong families as Sandy and I thought about hmm, maybe some maybe let's talk about some theories of child development what do we sh what should we do during COVID nineteen and like no 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 let's do something else that's outside of my comfort zone I want to do something different but that I also have been cooking a lot for my own families so I you know I've gone through a lot of struggles and um, try to you know overcome some some, you know, some stressful situations that I felt I had to cook the best food for my kids because, you know, during COVID, I should do my best. I should, you know, but then I felt like, it, no, I don't think so. I think I just need to do my best to meet everybody's needs and also my own needs. Um, so I came up with some ideas of how to, you know, create some quick and simple recipes, stress-free recipes that the kids can enjoy and they're delicious. Um, and then we can, you know, during cooking times and like, usually talk to my kids about current affairs. And when they, um, you know, when they welcome the opportunities, they join the conversations. And we, sometimes we had really fruitful conversations from cooking or brainstorming ideas. What should we cook, you know, for the next meal? So um, for me also traditionally, I mean, I, I grew up, I was very fortunate. My both pairs of grandparents were great cooks. So I grew up with very good food, um, home cooking food. So the kitchen for me represents a nurturing place um, that brings me my cultural identity and tradition um, and also represents my upbringing. 
So I hope that, you know, by my, my sharing my love of cooking with my kids, they can also understand what, you know, what my hopes are for them um, through cooking. So, um, so I understand all of us, you know, been go going through a lot of stressful um, time during COVID-19. So I hopefully for today's um, webinar, um, for all of you, you know, whether you're working parents, single parent, grandparents, anybody who, you know, who take care of kids can take something away from this webinar and also share some of your tips on what do you do with your kids when you cook for them. So what are some strategies, like some quick tips that we can take away? Um, so there, I have some recipes um, for today. <laughs> so just, um, uh, just interrupt for just a second, uh, Sandy, which is Anna put yeah. in the chat, it's also yes. very strong in Hispanic culture too, the kitchen as a nurturing place and the yes. key part of the home. It's and always the, generational. Yes, it's generational, the grandparents, your parents and yourself and to your, you know, your own children. So it's such a very important place. And, and before we start, before you start with the recipes, where are you? Where are you, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm in California. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, and so, it brings family closer together, the kitchen. Yes, yes. And then I always believe, um, you know, who um, it doesn't matter, you know, um, who the child is, as long as that child has one dedicated adult who loves him or her, that child will be fine. They will continue to feel resilient. So during COVID-19, as long as we can stay there, hang in there to show them our love. For me, through cooking, of course, one of the strategies through cooking, providing them delicious, quick and simple food that they enjoy. So that's one of my strategies to, you know, to keep them motivated, you know, during this tough time, because at the beginning, like since March, they've had to switch from in-person learning to online learning. They had, I have three children and they all, you know, have been going through different coping stages, different paces to go through the coping stages, um, emotionally, um, socially. Um, so I felt like giving them consistent um, delicious food that they enjoy, that is fun and tasty, has been helping them, you know, to nurture them, their soul and their body, to continue to able to, you know, to build up their resilience, to, you know, to, to face the challenges that's ahead of them. So. So that's why I really want to share some of my experiences with you all today. Okay. So um, today, uh, my three, uh, so this is today's menu. So I have um, three rice bowls, very quick and simple rice bowl recipes I want to share with you all. Um, and they are tomato and egg, uh, tuna mayonnaise, um, teriyaki salmon. Um, so the rice bowls recipes are it's very simple, um, it's kind of stable dish at uh, my family. If you can think of having the rice as a, at the bottom of a dish, and then you put a topping on top, right? And then for the for my children, um, uh, room temperature rice is fine, but for myself, I like hot, hotter, warmer rice. Um, and then also for the rice dish, you can also think of when you're like making a pizza. You know, you always have a pizza dough, right? And then you put different toppings on top and you make, you can be creative thing outside of the box to make it really delicious pizza. So for the rice bowls, it's very similar idea. So you put rice in the bottom and then you put some of your favorite topics on top. Um, so brainstorm with your kids, what do they like? You know them best, right? Well, what do they always like to eat? And then you can um, uh, create a dish that maybe you've never made before <laughs> and then put on top of the rice and have them taste. So today, so these are the three um, recipes that uh, that my children really enjoyed. And then after that, we got, we will um, share a recipe with you um, on how to make a boba bubble fruit tea or, or drink um, that I like and my children also like. So, uh, okay. and then again, um, some of the tips that I wanna share with you um, during cooking, um, during your COVID-19 cooking is your day, my, I always like, before COVID, I always try to do my best to prepare some dishes that are more complicated, that would require more seasoning, more time to marinate, um, more time to prepare, more time to go shopping for some ingredients that are not readily accessible. But for 
during COVID-19, I found that, no, I need some more time. I have other priorities. I need to stay with my kids, right? During online learning, I need to support them. Um, also myself, I need some more time to, to rest myself um, because it is, it is um, um, stressful during COVID-19. So I found that using quick and simple recipes uh, is one of the strategies that I could save time um, and also has, you know, have to provide them with a good um, nutrition balance for the, uh, for the meals that I provide. Also stress-free, um, you don't, um, something that you can easily find from your pantry um, or something that you can easily freeze if you buy a bulk. Um, and then you can always take them out from the freezer if you need them. So those are some of my strategies. And then another thing I like um, to stress that is I don't really enjoy dishwashing. So uh, the rice bowls dish is just, you just have one bowl per, per child. So you don't need to <laughs> wash a bunch of dishes after each meal. So that is like a tip that I really want, <laughs> want to stress. That really has helped me a lot. <laughs> so, okay. So the first um, recipe is again, is a tomato scramble egg rice bowl. So the ingredients uh, for this dish uh, is a little bit of oil, cooking oil, two eggs, one chopped tomato, a half bowl of cooked rice. Um, is any type of rice cooked, a short grain, jasmine, brown rice, any rice of your preference. And then, um, and then a half tablespoon of ketchup. So that's the key ingredient. Um, that's the, the, the soul for this dish. The, the ketchup provides a little bit of the sweetness and the sourness that would bring the whole dish together. So, so there's a, a video clip that I um, took uh, last week with my kid to demonstrate how to cook this dish. I'm not sure the audio might not might be a little bit off, so I might talk over if you can hear the, the audio well. Okay, so here's the uh, video. So I cooked outside of my house. <laughs> And there was a bee fly flying around, so <laughs> during the time. Okay. Yeah, it's not working. The audio. You're gonna need to. You're gonna need to narrate. So there's a chopped tomato, and um, again ketchup and a bowl of rice. little lagging too. So there are two, there are eggs and then you later on you'll see my son coming in to help um, mix the eggs before we put on the frying pan. Cheyenne, what's going on? Mm -hmm. By the way, my shirt says keep calm and eat. That's <laughs> in Chinese. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> It was working before. I think you're making room for your child. I think now you're asking your assistant to come over. Yeah, to come yeah, over. There but there <laughs> your young assistant. And you're about ready to get your young assistant to crack the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> right. How did he learn to crack eggs? Well, they just watched me cook, you know, in the kitchen. And then particularly this, this, my youngest, he's always been very interested in cooking since he was really young, like measuring, testing the temperatures. Um, yeah, he's very inquisitive, he's very curious about what I do in the kitchen. He always asks, what are you making? Can I make, can I cut, can I help? <laughs> and I, yeah, so I always invite him, so he's used to it. He was so like conscious about whether he was being on camera, so he always looked up. <laughs> during this filming. <laughs> well, except for he got comfortable. I don't know, Cheyenne, if you could keep it going, that would be really helpful. Yeah, I think maybe there's a lagging. I don't know. What I don't know. It was working fine before when we were testing it prior to the, it always happens, right? And I think you said here you have to get the oil pretty hot. Is that what you said? No, yeah, that's, um, my tips is to cook really nice scrambled eggs. It's, the, you have the cool pan and then put oil in. And when the oil is gets hot, then you pour in the egg. So, so he's ready to um, pour the egg 
batter into the pan. Um, while I keep the oil, kind of stay away from him. And he, he's, he wants to try to turn on the, the stove a couple of times and I let him when I watch, you know, supervise him. He was fine. And yeah, teaching kids to cook is, to is kind of like the prep, the prep for teaching kids to drive. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I, I had a son, and when I was, you know, driving, it was really deep because teaching a child to drive, <laughs> there he uh -huh. is, so cute. You know, they're in the driver's seat. It's a very dangerous thing. It's a big car. You know, it's like it could hurt. They could, they could get hurt. Same thing, right. with cooking, right. you know, like you have to, you have to let them try, but you also have to make sure they don't, you know, burn themselves or hurt themselves. It, so. It's a risk taking, right? It's like, okay, where do you let them take the risk? Is it a safer risk or is it a high risk? <laughs> yeah. And I think you were saying yeah. here that you, you get the, the eggs get very dry, right? You like them to be dry. Yeah, so well, it's kind of well done. So you cook them well done. So um, when you pour in the tomato, so um, it wouldn't get smushy, right? It wouldn't get smushy with the tomato juice. That would naturally come out. So now I'm waiting, getting a bowl for the eggs. Um, and after that, um, we will, I think uh, I put in the tomato. Um, into the frying pan with like a teaspoon of oil. <laughs> there he is again. What's your son's name? Shoki. Did he, yeah. did, he have a, did Shoki have a fun time doing this he, with you? Oh, of course. Yeah. He was sitting he, when I was he, when he's not in the video. He was sit. He was next like to me in a sun chair, like watching me. <laughs> and he was the first to eat everything. <laughs> So then you put the oil in for the tomatoes, yeah, right? Yeah, for the tomatoes, right, right, right. I guess as, as you're doing this, I'm wondering from people in the chat, if you have a recipe that's kind of like this, like if this is reminding you of anything that you do or anything that your kids eat, you know, um, what she's saying now is you get, get it hot, kind of hot, she's gonna put the tomatoes in, right? Oh, she's gonna have her son right. so he put the tomatoes in. Yeah, so he came in and um, he wants to do it. I said, okay, sure. <laughs> and then you let so the that, yeah, the oil's hot. So Anna says it reminds her of pancakes and eggs for supper with my grandson. Oh, okay. What else? What else do people do that that this kind of reminds you of? Um, could you use any vegetable or do you just specifically use tomatoes? Um, tomato, because of the little bit um, sweet and sourness of it. So the kids really like it in my family. And wow. anything is preference, you know, um, with egg. Anything goes well with egg and rice and a little bit of ketchup. Yes, anything's fine. And I intentionally did not add any seasoning to the dish because um, of the natural juice from the tomato is sweet, right? And the juice comes out and then later on the ketchup will tie everything together. It's just a little bit, one, you know, a little bit of ketchup and that's all you need. Now he he's mixing everything together. He's, um, and then I turn off the fire when he mix, mix the uh, eggs and uh, tomato. You turned it off now? And in a little bit, I'll turn it off. I'll turn the fire off. Yeah. What grade is Shoki in? He is, today's his actually first day of school. So he's fourth grade now. He's in fourth grade. So they just had an online meeting this morning. <laughs> Google oh. Meet. <laughs> meeting their teacher and uh, classmate of 31 children together so he was really excited um, seeing them together so here he's pouring you know the dish the, the food onto the, the rice bowl and um, and I let him choose pick which pair of chopsticks does he want to use and he picked the blue ones and I said okay final touches on in the the rice bowl and then um there you go. There you go. 
Jesus says simple. French toast and bacon with the grandkids. Oh, I love bacon. Yes, 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 yes. That would tie really well with. So, is this a breakfast yeah. dish, or is this a lunch dish, or is this a dinner dish, or does it matter? Ah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It could be a main dish by itself without the rice in the bottom. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, any day, any time, you know, any time. And then um, the next uh, menu is tuna and mayonnaise rice bowl. So this one, this dish is um, very simple. Again, you, it does not require a cooking stove. Uh, it's room temperature. If any of you have tried um, sushi, then it's very similar. It's room temperature. So you use some rice and then some tuna fish with mayonnaise or tuna salmon mayonnaise, and then they roll up to the sushi roll. And this is just a different type of um, presentation um, to making it into a, a rice bowl. Well, I hope the video will work. So the uh, oh, so there are ingredients um, for this dish. Of course, mayonnaise, uh, and then a little bit of black pepper to taste. Again, uh, half of rice, cooked rice. For this, for this dish, we also use a short grain sushi rice and one third can of tuna. So for my family, I use one third can of tuna per child um, for this dish, and of course, assorted vegetables and dry seaweed. It looks um, like the vegetables have been steamed, right? Like the ste yes. they're steamed prior? Yes, yes. So you can use it as for garnish and then you can use it for just a salad. You can put salad dressing over. So it's very something very easy. You can use it for many different um, ways to present the, the food. Yeah. But for this case, we use it for, for the top of the rice bowl. So I hope this will work. Let's see. So this video is just me and it. Um, let's play it to see if you can hear. The Shayan, audio. can you please play the video? Okay. So okay. So what I'm uh, what I'm doing in the video is that I'm introducing all the uh, ingredients uh, of the dish. So there's a tuna can you can buy anywhere and then I you don't need the water in it when you um put this dish you can pour out the water from the tuna can and then um dry seaweed you can get dry seaweed from many supermarkets now they come in in a in a packet of um in sheets right? it's like paper sheets so all you need is uh, a bowl to mix the tuna and the mayonnaise together. And, and I think I'm mean, very common. Yeah, I guess D, D you're here. We're having so, difficulty and then you, audio okay. on the video. And then you put uh, the mayonnaise and I put a little black pepper to take. I think, and I did a, yeah, go ahead. Tuna yeah. salad is pretty much, I mean, I, I'm very familiar with putting mayonnaise in tuna, <laughs> but I never yeah. put it on top of rice, you know, in quite this way. Um, okay. Or with, or with the, the sushi, the nori that you have. I mean, the, the, the yes. sushi, I've never done that either. So. Oh, okay. It's a very quick, super quick dish. And then the kids can make them by themselves. Um, mm -hmm. They're a pro now in my house. They can do it on their own. What's for dinner tonight, mom? Make a tuna bowl <laughs> for yourself, can you? Her mom is busy. So they can do it. They can just go to the pantry, grab a can of tuna, mayonnaise, mix, 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 rice, nori, done. So it's, so it's a very quick dish. Um, and the mayonnaise and the tuna, they somehow, they have a magical combination with rice. So they kind of, when you chew them together in the mouth, they, they're very 
um, they provide harmony in the taste. So you, they really, it's really tasty. So it doesn't make, it might not look that way when you look at the rice bowl, but if you taste it, wow, you'll be addicted to it. It's, it's really good. Yeah, and so I should say, I have eaten yeah. with Sandy and I have gone to restaurants with Sandy and she is quite a foodie. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was really interested in the simplicity of the recipes that you had in this, Sandy. And I, because, yeah. because I think, and I love what you said at the beginning about, you know, really thinking about during COVID, how to reduce your own stress and how to make things simple, you know, so yeah. that, so that, and to make it so that it's something you can do with kids. And it's just right. really um, beautiful because I know that like, I've had very complicated food with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you have very highly exacting standards. So it tickles me also when you say that there's a magical relationship between tuna and mayonnaise and rice. I, I'm yes. I'm to explore that magical relationship. Yes, of course. And it is for adults too. Is If you like uh, a little spicy kick, add some shiracha into the mix. That would be mayonnaise? really good. Yeah, you can add shiracha, the chili paste to the mix for adults, right? If you like, just add a little bit spicy cake and it will really, really <laughs> becoming an adult dinner. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so and try that too. So now I'm putting, it's done, so the dish is done. So you just, I'm just putting some vegetables um, into the rice bowl. And you see how I cut the seaweed? I put a little, I cut off a little square and then I put it on top of the rice before I put the tuna on top and that's it. Very simple, easy dish to make. So in the chat, what are you thinking about, about these recipes? What are you thinking about um, how they're the same or how they're different than what you do? Do you have questions about the rice bowl idea? Are people making rice bowls now? Myra says, love, love it, so easy and looks so good. Okay, so why are we on this slide? We should be on the salmon teriyaki slide, right? So um, I think we just want to remind everyone, like with some of the tips that we talked about earlier about uh, what to, like making sure the ingredients are easily accessible and the food is delicious for the kids. Um, for, for this dish, um, again, salmon teriyaki is another type of rice, like another topic that I uh, selected for today's demonstration. Um, so you see, and then we're going to show what are the ingredients. Okay. So the ingredients are um, salmon, fish, right? The three pieces that I, I, I'm using for the demonstration. Um, cooking oil, teriyaki sauce. Um, black pepper, um, rice uh, also, and then a lot uh, assorted vegetables. So in, I hope that we can hear uh, the audio in the video that I talk about what type of teriyaki sauce you could use for the dish. So. We'll see. <laughs> it, it's okay, I can talk over too. Nope. So, uh, let's see. We've got some things in the chat here. People are loving it. Somebody loves the seaweed. Some other people said they never tasted the seaweed. Gabriel says he, she, that uh, he or she makes Korean beef rolls with rice. People uh -huh. are loving the recipe. Super easy. So, Somebody, uh, yeah. Oh, good, good. No, 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 no. So, so um, mix tuna and mayo with noodles. But rice is an interesting idea, and they're going to try it. Oh, OK. Great. I have to try that, too. <laughs> well, I guess love noodles, too. So I'm talking about you know the salmon I got from supermarkets. I usually buy them in the, when they're on sale, buy them in Big Slab, free them. When I need them, I take them out, defrost 30 minutes ahead, and then cut them up in small pieces. And the teriyaki sauce. Um, you can homemade teriyaki sauce with sugar, soy sauce, and some sweet wine, but the store bought one much faster, you know, just get the bottle out for the dish. You don't need the homemade. And then vegetables and some oil. 
I've used very teriyaki yeah. with chicken too. With you could do yeah. chicken too, right? Yes, definitely. Oh, we have another child here. <laughs> so my second assistant. This is my another child. Um, my second child. She is yeah. She's a eighth grader this year. Eighth, and what's her name? Uh, Nayoka. Nayoka. Shokin yes. Nayoka. So put a little bit of oil, doesn't need a lot of oil because the salmon has its own natural oil. Um, you don't need the dish to be too oily, you know. So. Uh, oh, I will crack some pe black pepper to the salmon. Naoka re really likes black pepper. She puts black pepper on everything. <laughs> so, and then, um, we pan fry the salmon. So um, when we pan, pan fry, I, I let her know you don't need to turn them over until they brown on one side. Um, when you can tell when the tun when the salmon turns um, cooked, the orange gets um, darker. It's a it's a darker um, shade of orange when the salmon is cooked. So you check the color, um, and you see a darker shade on one side, and then you can um, turn them. And when they turn brown, and then so we're waiting now at this stage to turn the salmon. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm going to fit her Jerry on yet, huh? <laughs> yeah. So. And you don't marinate it in teriyaki, you just. Yeah, you don't need to. Yes, just a little um, black pepper to taste. Likely, but probably for teriyaki chicken, you would need to marinate. This is different texture. So now when we turn it, it'll go them brown. Darker shade of orange. So turn them. We do the same thing. We music eat. or something in the background. <laughs> She's dancing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like a TikTok. So, I know. <laughs> Teenagers. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it is. Um, interesting. I always uh, ask them during COVID, you know, what do you guys want to eat what do you, for lunch, for dinner? I ask them for their opinions. Um, and then, you know, they gave me shopping lists. So that's how I get ideas. So they, oh, mom, we're going to get some more this or that. They write them on a the whiteboard. That's how we communicate. Um, out of milk, they put it on the, on the board. And then, so, okay. And before I go, I said, are there anything else you need <laughs> for shopping? So, um, Right here, I'm, I, I noticed that the, the center of the salmon is still light orange. So then I let her know it needs a little bit more time. And when um, the whole piece turns dark orange and you, you, you know that it's uh, harder, the fish is not as soft and it's almost time, almost ready to um, pour in uh, the teriyaki sauce. And you'll hear the sizzling sound when you pour in the uh, teriyaki sauce into the hot frying pan. Um, so here, um, you just need, I think, two tablespoons um, of teriyaki sauce. I always put them on the spatula so you can kind of see how much you're pouring in um, to the pan. Teriyaki is a wonderful flavor. And I, I found also when I was cooking for kids, like, at a you know summer camp, love yeah. teriyaki. Yes, love teriyaki. It goes well with you know with a lot of food like teriyaki hamburger, teriyaki. Oh, I never had teriyaki hamburger. What's that you're putting in water? Have a little bit of water, just like two tablespoons. Just make sure the teriyaki sauce um, is um, not as thick, doesn't get burned, and then also the salmon gets cooked through. So you make teriyaki hamburger? Yeah, we can do this. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? 
Do you, you just need to put the um, warm up the teriyaki sauce and put a glaze on top of the burger before you? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I put the bun over. Yeah. And then now turn the the salmon over the beautiful glaze with the sauce. And we're almost done with the dish. What are you saying about the rice? Do you remember? <laughs> I'm letting, I think I don't, how do you put them on? Oh, look at this, little brother. Um, <laughs> he's waiting to eat. <laughs> um, so is this a room temperature one or is everything hot? It is because the fish is going to be really hot. So I have, for the kids, I have room temp, room temperature or um, warm is fine. doesn't have to be steaming hot. And the vegetables are, are also? It's fine. Yeah, room temperature is fine. Well, I don't know, would you like to, you know, put the fish in on the bowl? And um, just trying <laughs> using her chopsticks. <laughs> so, um, So you would put one piece of fish in each bowl, yeah? Or oh no, they love they they can eat the fish by by the fish themselves. They don't eat rice, but um, I put three pieces per kid. Um, oh, three pieces per kid. Yeah, they they eat. Yeah, they just love salmon so much. Oh. <laughs> so I I often look for um, weekly sale paper when they come in. Oh, they're on sale this week. I gotta stock up in the freezer. <laughs> Because they, they're easy to cook too. I mean, they, they cook faster than meat sometimes. Like, this fish, they, cook, they can cook. Anne says she looks delicious. She likes this recipe. Oh, yes. Um, easy to make too. But all of the dishes. I love the way your, your um, at least uh, your daughter loves vegetables. Look at her. She's like yeah. going down on the vegetables. Yeah, they, they love vegetables as long as they're really yummy food to go with it or have good salad dressing. So there we go. Another dish in a couple minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, these videos are like four minutes long. Yes. You know? yes. I mean, it seems like, so can you imagine making dinner for, with four minutes? I mean, you maybe had to steam, you, I think, do you have a rice cooker? Yes. Yes. So you cook the rice, the rice cooks itself. And then, right. the, and then the, you steam the vegetables, but right. really putting it together, so simple, so easy. So quick. It's like you're making dinner in four minutes. Five right. minutes. Don't stress yourself out. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, yes. Oh, I'm going. What were you? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I just say you don't need to stress yourself out, especially during COVID. Um, be creative. Think outside of the box. Use whatever you have in the house, you know, in the pantry, in the fridge, in the freezer. Um, the other day, uh, we made peanut butter jelly cookies. We had peanut butter, we had jelly. You know, those are the ingredients that we just come up with. <laughs> what did you do with the peanut butter and jelly? Um, we made cookies. You made cookies? Yeah, it was delicious. Yeah, so so just be creative. Get your kids involved. Ask them, what would you like to eat? Um, could we make something that's different? Um, let's try out something. That's also conversation time, right? You get to know them better. And then... Sometimes they share more more things that's going on in their school life with you. <laughs> that's my kids. I do that. So, yeah, yes. I found that, that 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 was the best time. Like sometimes when you're when you're driving or yes. when you're just like doing something that's not like not sit down to talk, but just sit down doing other things together, and then the conversation flows more naturally. And a lot of times it can get pretty deep, you know. If yes. yes. So are you asking the, the viewers, what are some of your cooking tips? What are you doing during yeah, I, need, I need ideas, just like you all need ideas. I need some ideas. <laughs> what are some quick so hacks what, you have? Some yeah. hacks I need to have. <laughs> so what are some ideas? What have you been doing um, for cooking with kids during COVID or with and for kids during COVID? I know, you know, I, I remember... Um, 
is a is the resources we have in the community this is also important i know that in my community um, a lot of schools are, pre, are providing um free meals for pickup so i think that's you know that's a great resource so if you don't have time to even cook like you know you don't have even time to cook for three meals a day use the resources and that's one of the protective factors that we know we have for big strong families a parent cafe right to know the resource to have the knowledge um from others, build relationship with their communities. That's what we all talk about in parent cafes. So, you oh. know, cook, if cooking is not your priority right now, other things is, is your priority in your family. So go out, ask, you know, ask your, your friends or, you know, people you trust, what are the, some of the resources in my community I can go to? She says that well, quesadilla well, with chicken, very fast and easy. So quesadilla, like a, like a, a tortilla? Oh, yeah. With chicken and cheese, yum! I'm getting hungry. What else? What else are you doing, everybody? What are you What are you doing? How are you feeding yourself? I know at the beginning of COVID, I was very ambitious. Like with my extra time at home, like I was, yeah. I was making cookies. Like I, I don't even eat cookies very much, but I was like trying new recipes, and it's gotten, um, it's gotten much. Both my shopping and my eating has gotten way more simple, uh, uh, right. way more simple as time has gone on. Hmm. hmm. Come so, on. So, we know you. We know you have ideas here. Oh, Anna says she makes a crock pot of ham and beans. So during the week, you can make it in burritos or tostadas. So, so you make, so you slow cook the ham and the beans ahead of time, and then you can put it together in different ways. Okay. Great idea. Yeah. So it's different because it's like, it's like a different meal if you're having tostadas versus having a burrito, right? Like you wrap it up in a burrito or have it on top of tostadas. It's a, it's a different it many ways. Yeah, eat it many ways. How about shopping? Do you shop differently? Do you shop, shop more in like a bulk and then you store them i i mean like for me i don't as like COVID, we try to limit our you know outgoing time so when i go to supermarket now i buy more um and then i you know chop them up and i put them in the freezer so. deborah says she loves crock pot cooking it was a life oh. leader as a single parent oh that's right mm -hmm. you can just leave them in the crock pot and come back later yeah it become a delicious meal yeah I've been doing a lot of slow cooking too. Oh, we have been using our, Alyssa says she's been using our air fryer like crazy. Anna oh. says, grill your meat on the weekend and throughout the week you make salads or sandwiches or put it with rice. And yeah. Ella says she shops in bulk like lentils, beans, and rice. Ah, okay. And, and Tracy says she agrees, cooking more simply, more fruits and vegetables. The gardens are doing great this summer. Hilda says shredded chicken breast cooked or mixed with mayo pepper, salt, tomatoes, celery on top of salad or sandwiches for kids. That's great. That shredded chicken, chicken breast could go a lot of different ways because you could cook and mix it with mayo and then you could take some of the shredded chicken breast and like do it like a pulled chicken. You could put it with like a barbecue sauce, um, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. So Gisela says cut up pepper, Cucumber, bell pepper, finish your chicken on the skillets and you have a salad. Um, Alyssa says salmon foil pack on the grill, add veggies and sweet potatoes, yum. Can we like publish the, the ideas later on, Kathy? I think this would be Yeah, good. don't you think I, it would be cool to have a cookbook, like cooking during COVID cookbook. Oh my goodness, and we could get yes. people to submit their recipes and we could, yeah, that would be awesome. Have them take a picture of what it was look like, kids eating them. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a story yeah. thing, you know, with, with kids cooking. cooking. Yeah. That would be awesome. I think we I think we should do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. I could feel all of your love pouring in, like cooking for your kids and families, like through your sharing. It's so warm and nurturing. Even though I'm not cook eating your, what you cooked with. <laughs> this is wonderful. It is wonderful. So what's the, I think we should go to the next slide. Um, oh, Cindy says shopping is different. I find I'm spending more money at the grocery store because of over shopping. And she says leftover chicken we shred and create a tortilla soup or a vegetable soup. 
and I'm not going to the grocery store anymore because I'm like a high risk. So I have fun delivers, you know, free to me. Yeah. Um, and Whole Foods, I, I shop a lot at Whole Foods, mm -hmm. but I am spending like half the amount of money that I was spending on food before because I'm not impulse buying. You know, I'm just ordering things. Oh. I'm ordering it online and, I, and I'm not like, well, I used to love walking around. One of my pleasures, walking around grocery stores and whatever's fresh, right. whatever looks, but this way it's just much more like kind of, this is what I'm gonna eat this week, you know? And, and there's less in my refrigerator and there's also less waste. Like I'm not throwing anything okay. out. Angelica says she cooks carnitas in the crock pot as well as my beans. Then I make tacos with the sided beans, use leftover carnitas to make tostadas and tortas, and I get three meals from it. Oh, that's such great kids. Okay. Okay. I have a bag of tortillas in my in my fridge. I want your recipe for carnitas. Alyssa says, same. I've been doing Walmart curbside and Instacart. No impulse buying, and it saves your list. So shopping is easier. Yeah, oh, okay. it's just streamlined. It's just a lot streamlined. Someone asked where to get um, nori, where to get the seaweed earlier on in the chat. And I know that you can get it at a lot of grocery stores actually have it in the international section yes, yes. with um, with the soy sauce and with, with those kinds of things. Yes. Um, and you can also, I mean, obviously you can get it in an Asian market, but <laughs> But I don't know how people are going to those yeah. very much. Um, right. Deborah says freezer meal cooking, where you prepare a month work of meals and freeze them on a Saturday afternoon. Oh, what I want to learn more about that. Freeze, okay. Deborah. I want to learn more about that. <laughs> that sounds really good. Yeah, what kind of meals do you freeze? What kind of meals are good to freeze? Because I know some things freeze well and other things don't freeze that well. Right. Soups, I think, freeze pretty well. Mm -hmm. I guess you could cook, you could cook meats ahead of time and freeze them, and then like, and then mix them up on you know with. I'm doing yeah. a lot of rice, and mixing things with rice, <laughs> and from different cuisines, <laughs> like different like vegetables, different sauces, like you can make it right. taste totally different, like. I discovered kimchi fried rice. Like I used to make fried rice, like with just oh, like soy sauce and, and some vegetables and some meat and some egg and some peanuts or something like a, a sprinkled on top. I used to make like yeah. that kind of a fried rice. And then somebody talked on one of the cooking shows about kimchi fried rice. And it was yeah. like bacon and kimchi, which is like a fermented Korean cabbage um, yeah. as the main, and then with the uh, and some of the kimchi juice, and then with with rice that you've already cooked and mix it up. Um, I put some peas in it. It was really good and very different tastes. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Deborah's yeah. doing the same as the crock pot to reheat. So soups and stews and curries. Wow. Curries are also great, you know. And I found some really cool curry um, spice mixes. Again, like that 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 were like. You know, Trader Joe's has a lot of different simmer sauces and and bottled curry sauces and stuff right. that aren't too expensive. And it's a way yeah. of giving something a totally different flavor. Like if you're cooking chicken and you just use a experiment with a different simmer sauce. Just like the brisket it. and chili freeze well. Mm -hmm. Oh, we better get to the boba bubble fruit tea and juice. So because <laughs> we're running out of time. <laughs> So. Oh, I think it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the uh, on the menu is the last on the last item on the menu today is the bubble uh, boba fruit tea um, or fruit juice. Uh, the ingredients are very simple. Uh, a box of juice um, of your choice, black tea or green tea, whatever tea do you like you like your your preference, um, and then the uh, bubble fruit cups. Some bubble fruit cups, of, uh, they come in different flavors and then you can pick the ones that you like and ice, I need uh, crushed ice. And what is bubble fruit? I've never seen that before. I, is, I think it's quite new. It came to the market in the, in the last two months. Uh, it's quite popular in my communities in the supermarket. People can buy them. It's, a, it's like traditional fruit cup, you know, like you pack with kids lunch boxes. Oh, but, the cocktail? 
Yeah, free cocktail. Yeah, and but then this brand they came up with ideas of adding fruit bubble, fruit boba into the oh, cup. tapioca. So, Isn't boba like tapioca? Is that what yeah. it is? Also bubble. Now they kind of intermix the term. They don't use tapioca for this cup, for this fruit cup. They use um, bursting popping boba. So it's like a little, little bubble, just literally bubble, and then you chew and burst, and the juice will burst out from those bubbles. Oh wow! And that's Del Monte. So it's like a right. It's like a you know, a brand that would be available in supermarkets. Yes. It, I, yeah, it's available in, in our area, um, quite popular, you can eat them by themselves, you know, and I use them for the bubble tea, um, because of doing, you know, for COVID, we don't go out as much, we don't go to bubble tea store as much, so I came up with this idea, oh, let's make our own. Yeah. <laughs> and kids well, love them, and thing. I love them too. <laughs> that's a great thing, like, how do we make our own, I mean, there's the air fryer too, like french fries and stuff, but how do we, like, things that we may be used to go out more to get, like how do we make it at home? Yeah, pizza, right. Flatbread pizzas, you know, those kinds of things. Right, just be creative. And there is another video, I hope it'll work this time. Um, if not, I'll talk over, it's very simple. Very, very simple, just like everything else in sharing in the Hi. webinar. I want me to show you all how to make a oh, this one just sweet, Icy cold boba fruit tea or fruit drink. Um, the ingredients are very, very simple. You can get them anywhere in the supermarket. So all you need is to have um, a box of juice, any type of juice that you have in your refrigerator. You can grab it from a supermarket. Uh, unsweetened black tea. And recently I found this, this is, um, very interesting bubble fruit cup so that I found in a supermarket is from Del Monte. It has, um, let's see, it has bubble popping boba, um, and then it pops up juice um, once you, you know, chew and pop the boba in your mouth. So it's very interesting. So I've been calling this boba drink is because it's, I'm, I'm using this fruit cup for this recipe, and it's been very popular in my house, and the kids love it. And Especially during, during COVID, we don't go out much. We don't go to boba house and buy our, you know, our usual boba tea. So this comes in very handy. So yes, I'm gonna make. I'll be making two glasses today, and of course you need also a tub of uh, crushed ice and straws. So maybe would you like to come help me put um, the tea or juice together? So today we're going to make um, a glass of um, boba tea and a glass of boba um, fruit drink. Okay. If you're, you know, if your children are too young um, and can't tolerate caffeine, so then you can use um, the fruit drink. Would you like to put maybe half cup of ice in each of the glasses? Okay. Um, so I will open the fruit cup while you do that. And if the juice is too sweet for you, you know, feel free to put more ice into the cup. Um, or you could have half juice, half roasted milk, and um, so it makes it a really nice and refreshing smoothie, like a fruity smoothie with boba in it for your kids. So, uh, oh, and then the flavor we're using today is um, pear berry pomegranate. So when, so this pear and the popping boba has pomegranate juice in it. So when you pop them, the pomegranate juice will pop, will pop out. So would you like to also open one cup and open this cup and just pour it into the, the glass. Let's see. Okay. We have enough ice. I'm going to move the ice away. And then you can pour it in here and I'll pour it in here. I'll put it right there. So the bigger one, we're gonna make juice. What kind of juice are you using today? Uh, this is the orange strawberry banana. Okay. So we'll, it would go really well because our um, fruit juice has a uh, berry in it. Okay. So, okay, go ahead. And, oh, that looks, it looks really nice. Okay, all right. Do, do you think you have enough ice? I think so. Yeah. so I'm gonna put, um, 
black tea into mine. That's pretty. Okay. And here's a straw for you. Thank you. Here's a straw for me. And then we're gonna go cheers. <laughs> Give it a taste. It's really good. Yeah. It's, um, mine has, you know, of course my tea is unsweetened, so it has the tea flavor. But yeah, it also has the fruit juice in it. And then the pop, the boba pops in the mouth. How's yours? It's good. It's, it's yummy. It's yummy. Didi, you want to try? Would you like to try the fruit one? It's been really hot over where we are. Yesterday was um, hottest time in the afternoon was at 95 degrees. So this, the boba drink comes in really handy in that hot climate. We good? Mm -hmm. All right. See, he's almost finished half of this. And here we go. This is our very quick um, hack of making boba drinks um, at home during COVID time. Hope you enjoy and try to make them at home. Enjoy. Yes, <laughs> that's great. I actually love that you, you used to go out to get boba tea frequently. Yes, yes. It, there are many boba houses in our communities. I think it's just very popular. Kids like oh, when they feel like they had a tough school day, mom, can you go get me a cup of boba? So boba, boba. So it's, it's a community thing. It's like networking among yeah, kids and adults too. Yeah, it's like having coffee, kind of like, let's go to a coffee house, have a chat for the parents. Let's go to boba house. Let's get a cup of boba to talk about things. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Sandy. Yes. This sure. Is great. Oh, look at those beautiful bowls and uh, <laughs> the tea and the, it's so awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, but before we go, I want to make sure all the viewers know all of, you know, the Be Strong family's wonderful, you know, community services. If you have not visited their, the website, their wonderful video clips to introduce what, you know, what Be Strong family does for the community, such as a parent cafes. Um, <laughs> as Kathy mentioned, you know, Karen, um, parent cafes comes in multiple languages, um, including Chinese parent cafes and it's been very successful and helpful to the community members. So go visit the website, watch the video clips with a boba cup in your hand. And um, thank you so much, you know, for having me today, Kathy. And thank you for, well, thank you for being here. here. And, um, and people are asking about certificates. Uh, we can send certificates. Cheyenne, I thought we'd type in the chat how to, how to get them. And let's go to the next slide, Cheyenne, also. Poll is in progress. Please, before you leave, if you see the poll, please fill it out. We're trying to create the world we want to live in. So hashtag amplify. What do we want to amplify? Hashtag amplify cooking with kids. Hashtag yeah. amplify take care of your body. Hashtag amplify nutritious and fun. Stress less. Hashtag amplify stress less. That's right. Boba yeah. tea. <laughs> boba tea hashtag amplify boba tea <laughs> awesome what's the next next slide please and tomorrow we have a very special guest coming tomorrow angela o will be here and she is going to be doing a, a webinar called chaos and self-compassion moving into ourselves angela o is a very uh started her career a very illustrious career as a civil rights attorney and did a lot of work between the african-american and korean communities during the rodney king um situations in the in the 90s and she's since become a, a, a well she's all I don't know when but she's moved into she founded an organization called Go Compassion and she is a Buddhist meditation teacher so really looking forward to having her here tomorrow um, and then we start we kick off next week it two weeks of back to school and we really want you all to be here with us and and hash this out together because it's not, nobody has the answers about back to school. There are as many questions as there are answers. And so 
what we're going to do on Mondays is just kind of hold space for the conversation. What are the issues? What are what are we what are we doing about them? What's the uncertainty? What are our goals? And then we have different perspectives throughout the week on from different people uh, on the back to school issue. So Title I director, psychological dimensions, promoting um, learning, parents, teachers, tricks for parents, how to encourage and sustain children's motivation for learning. And then our Fridays are gonna be focused on parent engagement in the English. And in the Spanish, a whole different, um, a whole different menu. <laughs> I have menu in my mind from now to day. A whole different menu of webinars. And we want to have, shout out to Lori Sanchez, who's a regular attendee of our webinars. And uh, Lori has organized a lot of the content for the Spanish language um, series. So please continue coming, continue learning with us, growing with us. And if you have something you'd like to offer, oh, Together for Families Conference, tomorrow's the early bird deadline. Use our code, get a discount. It's October, but register by Friday and you get a discount using our code. And then if, if you have anything that you would like to offer, a webinar, no, then just email me because we would love to have more cooking with kids during COVID. And I can imagine some of you, you could, we could have one on crock pot cooking during oh, COVID. Yes, or free you meals. You could film <laughs> yourself on your cell phone video doing it with your kids. So let Sandy be an inspiration to you. And I think we really are going to work on a cookbook, Sandy. I think we oh, really yes, yes. be really cool. Yes, I can't wait to see it. Well, thank we'll you. We'll do so an invitation. Much. Hopefully you're going to be a big contributor. And our More Perfect Union Parent Cafes, just as a keep reminding us, um, we have cafes. If you have not experienced a cafe, or even if you have, and you're hankering to come to one, we're doing um, every month uh, a monthly free available to everybody cafe. And this, and we're, are, we're focusing for the rest of the year on a more perfect union, which is how do we deal with, how do we as parents navigate the landscape of inequality that exists in our country for and with our children? Uh, how do we grapple with the things that we experience and how do we help them become able to have high self-esteem, love themselves, and also be able to, to um, sustain the positive feelings in among different people. So anyway, that's the More Perfect Union Parent Cafes. Want to thank Sandy again for coming. I love that, that that virtual background. That is not your kitchen. I can just tell. When I can see it big, that is not your kitchen. A lot of food. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. Baking during COVID. We would love somebody to do a baking during COVID. Yes, yes. Come on. I know. Quick tips, how to bake during COVID. Yeah. Yes. So please, um, Offer up, offer up what you have and uh, you will be an inspiration also, just as Sandy was. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, thank you Sandy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, Stay healthy. Care. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.